Molecular motors are uh, protein machines that take um, a chemical energy source and they use that chemical energy uh, to produce uh, motion. When I was in graduate school I was uh, a neuroscience student um, and I was interested in the problem of nerve regeneration and I was studying that with uh, Eric Schuter at Stanford. And uh, in the problem of nerve regeneration there's uh, um, a question of how material gets communicated uh, within nerve cells. The nerve cell is a very unusual cell in the body because it, it's extraordinarily long. Uh, one part of the nerve cell is in your spinal cord uh, but that same nerve cell extends a very, very long process uh, from your spinal cord perhaps all the way to the tip of your toe and that's a single cell. And so I began to get interested in this problem of how do you transport material uh, in such a, a long cell. And it became clear that there had to be some kind of very special machinery, transport machinery, that was uh, mediating that cellular transport. By analogy to kind of transport systems that we relate to, um, you know, you could think about it that you need roadways in which to travel along. Um, and then you need special kinds of motors that mediate the transport. And those motors have to be attached to cargo. At the time, and this was in the early 80s, um, there were some general ideas about it, there were many theories, but uh, the exact nature of how this cellular transport worked uh, wasn't clear. I investigated this problem with uh, several other people. Uh, one was Mike Sheets, um, who was a sabbatical professor at the time at Stanford, and we initially teamed up. And then we joined forces with uh, Tom Rees and Bruce Schnapp, who are at the National Institute of Health, stationed at the Marine Biological Laboratory at Woods Hole, and that's where all the work was done. And uh, like many discoveries, um, you know, it, it was done in steps. The first step in the what we wanted to know were what were the roadways. And indeed, cells make these kind of long filaments which are serve as tracks. And uh, we needed to know which kind of track was mediating the transport. It turned out to be a special kind of track which was called a microtubule that we discovered was uh, the main roadway for this long distance transport inside of nerve cells. And once we got uh, the, the track nailed down, then we moved to try to find out what were, what were the motors. And it turned out to be a, a completely new protein that n no one knew about before. So it was a new type of machine and uh, we called uh, that molecular motor kinesin if you look at this video here, what you can see is that, is that this particular protein machine uh, has two identical parts to it that walk in this kind of hand-over-hand -hand manner to move stepwise along this particular uh, track. Kinesins represent one big class of these uh, molecular motor proteins. But there's a whole other group of molecular motors called uh, myosins. Myosins perhaps are the most familiar uh, maybe to most people because they drive muscle contraction. The size of these machines is incredibly small. They're about one millionth of an inch in size. So it's not trivial to come up with scientific techniques that allow you to ter interrogate a machine that, that's this small and much smaller than anything that uh, man has produced in terms of machines. Since I came here as a faculty at UCSF in 1987, I was interested in trying to understand how these uh, molecular motors uh, work, how the kinesin motor uh, produces motion along a microtubule. Honestly, at that time, it just seems like such a hard problem and one that you know, might not be e easily solved even in my lifetime. 
Um, but it's amazing how science works. Things are just going so fast right now and new techniques are being developed that one can't even imagine uh, that allow one actually to solve problems that, you know, a couple decades ago seemed uh, unimaginable.